Kling has an update to their Elements feature or tool, and Elements is the one where you can give it multiple images, like a subject, a scene, some kind of object, and have it incorporate all those into the video you generate. I made a video about this feature when it first came out, and the results were interesting. I was excited about this update because it's supposed to offer better performance, more consistency in the subjects or objects or whatever elements that you incorporate, and it lets you pick something specific from the reference images that you provide. So, for example, if you have a subject and you don't want the whole subject, you just want their face to be a reference, you can do that now. Let's try it out and then I'll show you some results from my experiments. From the Kling AI website, we'll click the Create button. Over on the left menu, we want Video. So here on the Video Generation page, underneath of Image to Video, we want to click this Elements tab. Now Elements is only available with the Kling 1.6 model, so it automatically switched the model for us from 2.1 to 1.6 and gives us this message letting us know it did that. Now to give it our elements or reference images, we can use one to four. They can be JPEG or PNG images, 10 megabytes max, and they need to be a minimum of 300 pixels in each direction. You can click to upload an image. You can click the History button if you want to grab an image from something you've already generated on Kling or something that you've already uploaded. I'm going to drag in my images. I've got this image of a guy from the 90s. It pops up this modal and what it wants to know here is what I want to reference out of this image. You can leave it on auto and let the AI figure it out, or you've got some other options here, subject, face, costume, that would mean the clothing, or manual if you want to select the item you want to reference manually. For this guy, we'll say subject, and then you get this green mask over top of the subject. It did a pretty good job of selecting him. If I needed to add to that, if it missed something, just make sure we have this brush tool selected, and you could brush any area it missed. If it got things that weren't him, if it picked up extra stuff, you can click this eraser button here, and then you'll have an eraser to get rid of whatever you don't need. This looks good, so I'm gonna say confirm. With that one set, now I wanna bring in this scene. For this, I want the whole image. This is my background or scene, so I'm gonna leave it on auto. I guess I could go over to manual and either use this brush tool and brush over the whole entire thing, or maybe use this drag tool and try and drag and get the whole entire image. But I'm just gonna undo that and leave it on auto and click confirm. The idea here is that I'm gonna have our 90s guy in this 90s scene talking on a payphone and while that's happening I want one other thing to happen so I'm going to drag in an image here of a car. I think the AI could probably figure out what I want out of this image but just to be safe let's click subject. There we go it's identified the car and it did a good job of separating the car from the shadow so that's good. Let's go ahead and click confirm. So now we've got our 90s guy, our scene, and our car. For the prompt I'm going to say the man is standing on the sidewalk talking on the payphone as the red car passes by. And a prompt is required here so we can't just tell it to to figure out how to combine these things. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to reference the man and this is the only image I provided that has a man in it so I didn't feel like I needed to describe him in any detail. Hopefully mentioning the payphone and the sidewalk tells it that this is the image I want this scene to take place in and then the red car is obviously what I'm looking for out of this image. These other buttons in the prompt box, you could save it as a preset if you want to reuse it. You can get some inspiration or your existing presets or you can get some help from DeepSeek. We're going to skip all that. For the settings, the default is professional, so that's going to be Kling 1.6 Pro. And the VIP tag means it's only available in paid plans in Kling. Next is the duration, choose between 5 or 10 seconds. Then the aspect ratio, are seen 16 by 9, that's what I'm going to go with. And then the number of outputs is how many versions of this video it's going to generate when we click generate. To create more than one at a time does require a paid plan. I'm going to select two outputs, and by the way, I am using a paid plan. It's the lowest level paid plan. Scroll down past these settings, and we have an option for sound effects. It's free for now. Leave that toggle on if you want it. Turn that toggle off if you don't want Kling to add sound effects to the video. We'll go ahead and leave it on. And then you have a negative prompt, which is optional. I'm going to leave that blank as well, and we'll come down and click Generate. And our video is processing. That took about four minutes for both of these generations. Let's see how they turned out. I guess for the sound, it just decided to focus on whatever he was saying on the phone, which doesn't sound like real words to me, but okay. I don't like that it decided to take the word phone that was written on this payphone and turn it into gibberish. And he's holding the phone up to his ear, but the phone is also still hanging on the payphone. So that's not good. And it did not bring in our red car that we supplied an image of and said the red car was supposed to drive by. I guess it picked up on this burgundy car that was already in the scene image and decided to move it instead. Let's check out the second variation of that. It's selfie, I'll take those inside that and turn 
So yeah. And that's pretty much the same. So let's come back here to our scene image. I'll click here where it says auto reference and that'll open up this dialogue again where I can select what I want and don't want. Let's try manual. I use the drag, try and get as much of it as we can. Oh, work with me here. Try and get as much of it as I can with the drag. And then we'll switch over to the brush. How big is that? It doesn't show us the actual brush. It's just this pencil thing. So that's a little weird. I want much bigger. There we go. Try and get all these edges. Okay, well, somehow that just worked. Now let's get the eraser. I wanna try and take out this car is the idea so that it doesn't see this red car maybe or doesn't include it. It can bring the other one in. There we go. Let's give that a shot. We'll say confirm there and we'll generate. All right, so we've got the guy in the scene. We've still got the weird phone thing going on where he's holding the handset up to his ear but it's also still on the phone it's messed up the text on our phone and now the red car driving by looks more like the one we supplied although not entirely consistent the second output from this one where we eliminated the reddish looking car from our scene pretty much the same the phone's weird the text on the phone is weird we do get a car that looks a lot more like our red car reference image but not entirely Here's another video I generated using Kling's Elements. I gave it this orange sports car, this police car, and this street scene. And I just set the reference to auto for each of these. I thought it would be able to figure out what I wanted out of each one of those images. And I gave it the prompt, the orange sports car speeds down the street with a police car chasing close behind. The sound effects are okay, I guess. But what I got was the orange sports car followed by some hybrid of the orange sports car and the police car. And then the police car and none of them look like they're speeding down the street exactly. I tried that again using the manual selection with, you know, dragging the little box around the car and the police car. That one did a lot better with the basic concept. However, it didn't do a great job of maintaining the consistency on my orange car, and it completely boogered up the text on the side of the police car. And those flashing lights on the police car are not very realistic. I thought maybe the issue was I was giving it images of the driver's side of both of these vehicles, yet the position of the camera would have it on the passenger side. So I thought maybe it had trouble trying to figure out what the other side looked like. So I switched up the street scene so that it would be on the side of the vehicles that I had given it reference images of. This time for the orange car, I used subject that put the green mask just on the car and nothing else around it. I went with the manual selection on the police car because when I went with subject, it wasn't getting the whole car and I left the scene on auto reference. I also changed up the prompt a little bit and said the orange car speeds down the street past the camera with the police car chasing closely behind with its blue and red emergency lights flashing. The sounds are okay, but I ended up with emergency lights on top of the orange sports car. And again, I wouldn't call this speeding past the camera. Another trial on that one gave me one orange car moving sideways, another orange car that has the police lights on it. And when we see the side of it, we realize it's a morph of the orange car and the police car. I gave it an image of a cowboy, a horse, and a modern gas station. I selected the cowboy as a subject, the horse as a subject, and gave it the prompt, the cowboy riding the horse stops next to a fuel pump at a gas station and gets off the horse. So we got the cowboy, he's riding the horse. Looks like he almost got off the horse, but changed his mind. They stop in the general area of the gas pumps, but, but he does not dismount the horse. We'll try again with the same images. I tweaked the prompt just a little bit here. The cowboy rides the horse, stops next to a fuel pump and gets off of the horse. He does get off the horse this time, but his leg morphs and then his whole bottom half blurs and melts as he's trying to do it. So that's no good. I thought maybe I was asking too much for him to be riding the horse and getting off of the horse. So I changed it to just the cowboy stands with his horse next to the gas pump looking confused. It does have the cowboy standing next to the horse looking confused. Of course, I wanted them next to a gas pump, not out here in the parking lot. Next up, I wanted to take the woman from this image, put her in this evening gown, and have her show up in this ballroom. So I took the beach image, use subject selection. Now it selected both of these women on the beach. So then I just went back with the eraser and erased out the one subject or person that I didn't want. Then I gave it this image of this woman wearing a dress and selected costume and it picked just the dress, not the woman's head. It got her arms in there too, but I figured that would be okay. Then for the ballroom, I left it on auto reference. For the prompt, I said the woman with blonde hair enters a glamorous ballroom in an elegant blue evening gown, people mingling in the background. <laughs> 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 
Now that could plausibly be our woman from the beach scene and that could be our ballroom, but that is definitely not the dress or anywhere close to the dress we provided as a reference image. I rerolled that one, everything the same. Again, it does what I asked it to as far as the scene, this woman entering and people in the background, but that's not the dress we provided. Next, I wanted this guy in a suit to be meeting up with this guy in the leather jacket and ripped jeans to exchange this briefcase in this parking garage. It starts off really weird. I'm not sure our characters are all that consistent, but we do end up with the guy in the suit handing the briefcase to the guy in the leather jacket. I tried tweaking the prompt a little bit and we end up with a third guy in the scene. But our third guy, who seems to be a clone of the guy in the suit, steps behind the main guy in the suit and then just disappears. Here's my last attempt at this one. And I don't know, maybe Kling's trying to have these guys shake hands or something. If it is, it's not working. Here I wanted to try using a face, so I brought in an image of me, I used the face reference, and then from this other image of an astronaut, I just selected costume, which got the astronaut suit there, and then I got this space station thing going on and said the man in the astronaut suit works inside the space station. Looks like it did a pretty good job of putting my face on that character and then putting that character in the space station. And what it's got me doing could pass as working inside the space station. But it did eliminate the helmet completely from the astronaut suit. The other variation of that one has the helmet in place, but my chin sticking out past the place where the glass or clear plastic or whatever would be. And it looks like my eyeglasses have morphed into one thing with some visor thing in the helmet. And I don't know what it's got me doing with my hands there. Seems like I might have a lack of oxygen. So it's good that you can select specific things from a reference image, like just the face or just one subject from an image that has multiple subjects. But as far as the consistency, there's still a lot of room for improvement. And the video quality isn't awesome either. It would be nice if the elements feature worked with Kling 2.1, or I don't know, maybe Kling's working on a bigger, better version and elements is gonna be incorporated into the awesome Kling 3.0 or something. I don't know, I'm just guessing. That's not to say that all the generations were bad or that everything about them were bad. Some did better than others with maintaining the consistency of a character or an object or scene, and sometimes a little tweak to the prompt or an adjustment in the selections and the reference images made a big difference. So trying those things might be worth a shot too. It definitely has a habit of messing up any text that's in the images. So if possible at this point, I'd probably try to avoid using references with text in them. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.